About the theme of fire, could you say a little bit more about that? So you've read that beautiful opening uh, where we have that haunting of a fire, mm -hmm. but then fires come up over and over again mm -hmm. throughout the story. Uh, could you talk a little bit about why you chose that thematic to run through the entire story? Sure. It was um, uh, really, again, speaking to the question of cohesion. Like I was worried about the ways in which um, this novel would kind of stick together. And I, I felt that because the image that, that so struck me was that of this woman setting a fire, um, and then the townspeople refer to Ophia as the child of the night's fire, and so there's this constant kind of referral back to the fire. Um, if I kind of related each character that comes after uh, in Ophia's lineage as somehow in relationship to that fire, it's a way of bringing Ophia back through the stories without having to name her in each chapter. Um, and so there are characters like Yao who is scarred by fire or a character like Marcus who's afraid of fire or a character like Aquia who um, is visited by fire. Um, and all of this is, is again just a way to bring Afia throughout the lineage without having to bring her physically into the page. Um, and I think uh, because Essie uh, is sent through the middle map the Middle Passage um, to America, there's a similar relationship to water. And so water appears on her side of the family over and over again. Um, and those two elements balance each other out, balance the two lineages out, um, but also allow the two sides of the family to be in conversation with one another um, in a way that allowed me to kind of wrap my head around um, writing something that covered this much time. It's very compact. Yeah. Uh, you tell a, a, it's a, you know, it's the kind of story that could have gone over a few volumes, right? Yeah. Um, why was it important to tell this particular story for you at this particular time? I mean, we have a, a lot of stories uh, in American literature that bring us back to this moment, a moment that Baldwin would say uh, America has never reconciled itself with. And so why was it important, and, and do you think that it is the fact that you yourself are someone who has emigrated here, who's Ghanaian, and then has become American since early childhood? Mm -hmm. uh, was it just that it's coming through you at a particular time? What was your intervention? Yeah, I mean, I think it's important because we haven't reconciled with this history. Um, I, I, as was mentioned in the um, intro, I was born in Ghana, but I grew up mostly in Alabama. And I think the irony of you know coming from a country that had this involvement um, in the slave trade and then ending up in a state where the effects of slavery are still so strongly felt wasn't, wasn't lost on me, um, even as a child. And I was kind of really deeply interested in, in learning about the ways in which these, these two histories might connect. Um, and I hadn't, I hadn't really learned about it. Um, uh, as deeply as I wanted to in school. And so this book was an opportunity, I think, to, um, to think through the lasting legacy of slavery. Um, I think in, in many ways this book felt like a response to people who say things like, slavery happened a million years ago, why does it matter? Um, or why can't you get over it? Um, the idea that, that it's this unreconciled thing um, that does still leave an imprint on our present um, to me, this book was, I know people talk about it as though it's historical fiction, and that's certainly apt, but to me, the, the book was very much about the present, um, and it was very important that, that we read it in, in light of the present. 